Alright guys, uh, today I want to go over, I've been hearing a lot of misconceptions and half-truths and so I want to discuss the reality of the 9mm versus the 45. And I know a lot of people, you know, they get on there and they kind of put their opinions out there as to why this and why that. And I want to add a little bit of fact and a little bit of video to the, uh, the equation. Uh, there on the left you see the 45 and on the right you see 9mm. Uh, and there is constant, constant, constant argument over which is better, the 9 or the 45. Uh, first I want to go over a couple of what I would like to call relative terms. That One of the things you're always hearing about is knockdown power. Uh, knockdown power is a, for lack of a better word, an imaginary concept, an imaginary thought process. Uh, so to truly discuss the difference between these two rounds we need to talk first a little bit about terminal ballistics. Uh, terminal ballistics are what a bullet actually does inside the human body and there are a number of reasons as to what a bullet needs to do or how it needs to you know, everybody thinks that if you put a big massive hole in a body that the people are going to bleed out. Uh, and first of all, when you're talking about a semi-self-sealing uh, uh, impact plate such as human flesh or animal flesh, that's just not true. Uh, you've got blood that clots that can plug up a hole. In, any talk to any deer hunter that's ever made a bad shot on a deer. Uh, even with the big bore caliber, 308, 6 whatever they're shooting them with, uh, there are plenty of animals that essentially run away after being shot with these large bore calibers. And uh, whether the animal goes somewhere and a week, you know, a day or two or a week two later or whatever dies, that is kind of immaterial to the conversation because everybody's wanting to know, you know, about the one shot stop. Uh, the truth is, even with the 22, if you hit the heart, lungs, liver, or central ner nervous system, you're going to get your quote-unquote one-shot stop. So it is truly all about, ultimately, shot placement. But uh, the next thing I keep hearing about is, well, the military is going to leave the 9mm and go back to a bigger caliber, such as a 40 or 45, because they want a bigger hole. That is true, but there's a reason for that. Per the Geneva Convention, it is against the law for the military to use hollow point bullets. They must use round nose ball bullets, uh, full metal jackets, whatever you want to call it, but they're not allowed to have a hollow point. And that's truly the difference between the knockdown power or the terminal ballistics of handguns nowadays is the fact that they're no longer building bullets uh, now they design ammunition. It used to be they just mass-produced round bullets. And for years and years and years and years, and one of my problems with the 1911 for a carry gun is it was designed to chamber a 230 grain round nose ball bullet. The hard ball, as it's called. Uh, and being that they use that same ammunition type in the 9mm per Geneva Convention rules, they don't get the added benefit of having a, uh, a hollow point to do the terminal work that they need to do. See, in terminal ballistics, you have two types of wound channels. You have the primary and a secondary wound channel. Your primary wound channel is the channel that the bullet chops or and or the hole that it makes going through. Your secondary wound channel is, without getting too long and technical, the secondary wound channel is a channel that is created by the kinetic energy of the bullet as it passes through the material. Uh, it stretches, expands, all that energy is transferred into the meat and it'll, it'll make it swell and rip and tear and cause internal damage. And I'm going to show you some videos here in a second of how that works. But ultimately, and I, and I teach this in all my classes, there are there is truly no difference ballistically for the quote-unquote knockdown power nowadays anywhere from 380 on up. Uh, I'm not going to argue that you know bigger bullets going faster and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not arguing that. 
what I'm arguing is the destructive capability inside the human body because honestly I mean that's what we're talking about nobody's talking about carrying a night you know nobody wants to carry a 1911 or a 9 millimeter on their hip concealed to defend themselves from a saber-toothed man-eating kitty cat that's not the problem anymore the problem is dirt bags with guns out there running around movie theaters and wherever trying to kill people so with the ability of a bullet to stop a human being uh, the difference between the hollow point and the hardball ammunition is the difference is why if we were all limited to hardball ammunition give me the biggest bullet I can carry 45 uh, 44 50 action express eagle whatever you I mean you give me the biggest bullet I can possibly get in my gun that's what I want but because of modern ammunition and the fact that it is truly designed now and designed to expand based on the velocities that the bullets are going I mean they they don't just cast bullets now and throw them in, in on cases and send in put them in boxes and sell them at Walmart uh, no they do do that in that cheap ammunition that people carry and get to shoot at the range and all that but true defensive ammunition right there what you have what you see in front of you is uh, those are both Hornady's bullets uh, I load my own ammunition and I prefer 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 Horner Days XTPs. Uh, I use the XTP for just about everything I load for defensive level ammunition. There's a couple of reasons for that, but that's not what this video is about. But uh, what I'd like to do now is I'm going to show these videos on my computer screen, but I'm also uh, I'm going to try and overlay them. And just so everybody knows, I'm not trying to steal credit for this because I did not do this. Uh, I got these videos from a guy named Brass Fetcher. Uh, which you can see why I'm holding this up here now and like I said I'm going to pull these videos off and overlay them in this video I'm really just holding this here to get the timing right And uh, but the first thing I want to look at is the 9mm uh, M882 this is the ammunition that they issue to USGI soldiers right now and uh, if you look and watch and I'm doing this just in case I can't manage to get these videos pulled off and overlaid. But if you watch as it goes through the gelatin, it creates that small hole that runs straight through. You have this very small channel, wound channel, very small secondary wound channel, uh, comparatively to the way, uh, because of the speed that the bullet's going through the human that bot or that ballistic gelatin. Uh, now let's look at the good old-fashioned uh, hardball. This is 45 ACP ball ammunition, 230 grain. And what you're going to notice is that through this, you have basically the same issue. Uh, boom! Quick small narrow channel as it runs through there quick small narrow channel so that's not very impressive either really but it is a bigger primary wound channel and a little bit bigger secondary wound channel so now we're gonna move on to and that's the that's the ammunition that they have to use in the military world in combat and that's why they have problem with nine millimeter in combat you know without the indentation of hollow points now let's look at uh, this is nine millimeter 147 grain golden saber ammunition uh, this is what I carried when I was in law enforcement uh, 147 grain golden sabers I don't know if these are bonded massive difference massive difference in the wound channel now you have this big massive gap you can actually see the lines that go along with the uh, the grooves in the bullet as it opens up and it curls uh, huge huge difference between that and the original uh, hopefully that saved that here you have that very narrow 
small wound channel with the 9mm M882. Then you go back to that massive wound channel that you get out of a uh, 147 grain golden saber. Now, fair enough, and something that needs to be noted, uh, this is the Hornaday ammunition 230 grain XTPs that uh, I carry in a 45 sometimes. But just to make it understood that, yeah, you can take the big bores and make the damage go way up too. And, and I'm not disputing that either. Again, massive, massive secondary wound channel as that pulls and rips and tears. And what makes a secondary wound channel a secondary wound channel is when it comes back and all that kinetic energy is expelled uh, throughout the tissue, the soft tissue matter, uh, that secondary wound channel essentially goes away uh, as it collapses back together because like I said, human flesh is truly semi-self-sealing. So, I'm not going to argue either that you can't take the big bore and make it a more effective weapon, too. Uh, so, all that being said, where am I going with this? Well, here, let me tell you where I'm going with this. Uh, you take a small carry pistol, such as the one sitting in front of you, that is a Glock 19. On its own carries 15 rounds of ammunition. You take a 45 counterpart to that full frame 1911, you typically have six to seven rounds. And as I think the gel just kind of showed you, there's not that much difference in true quote unquote knockdown power. I'm going to use that term even though it's 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 not a good term, but there's not that much difference between the between them anymore. There's just not, uh, not in the civilian hollow point world. Uh, I understand why the military's wanting to go to a bigger bore. I, I get it. There there's no arguing that fact. But we are just not limited with those problems here in the you know here here in the civilian world. It's just something to think about. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I ever. I've never met anybody that's been to a gunfight that, at the end of the gunfight, they said to themselves, "God, I wish I'd have carried less ammunition." You know, the the reality is, if you're carrying two spare magazines and a nineteen and a mid frame nineteen eleven, like Colt Commander or whatever. You know, odds are you are truly carrying 18 rounds at best, maybe 20. Uh, where if you're carrying a Glock 19 with two spare magazines, now you're carrying 45 rounds, 15 rounds per magazine. And everybody says, well, there's never many, that many shots fired in a gunfight anyway. Really? How many gunfights have you been in? First question. Second question. Do you want to prepare for the best case scenario or the worst case scenario? Uh, be that as may, this isn't a lecture on mindset or tactics or anything. This is just, I just want to talk about the bullets. And the end result is there is truly not that much difference anymore between calibers. Uh, Please check out Brass Fetcher's, uh, you know, ballistics page. You can look at ballistics for all kinds of ammunition, from your deer rifles to 380s to you, you name it. He's done it. Uh, I'm not affiliated with him in any way. I just I found it and I really like his, you know, his ballistics that he did. So uh, I'm going to actually pull his videos off and plagiarize them a little bit uh, and put them into this one. I'm going to leave his you know, his, his logo up there, because uh, I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to pass his work off as mine. I'm not. I'm actually using that to make my point, and um, I hope he doesn't have a problem with it. If he does, I'll take it back off. 
Uh, but there it is in a nutshell, guys. Uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, if you like what I'm putting out, please subscribe, like, share it with your friends, call your neighbors, uh, even make your dog watch it, whatever you need to do. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and have a good day.